Hi guys, so I decided to uh, create some content that is something that you guys can be able to learn from and also enjoy. I know that I've been posting content about checking in with you guys and seeing how you guys are doing, um, but I still wanted to, you know, put out content that is for the instructor to be able to use once the schools are back open. So this video is going to be focused on how to plan a lesson. Um, this one I've learned through trial and error and also through um, like while I was in my instructor program like trying to get licensed but I just want to kind of show some stuff I mean not show I wanted to share some things with you that I have learned in the process so the first thing I will say is um, if you share a teaching space with another instructor determine who is teaching what right off the bat um, so for me, I teach the lab or hands-on portion for the students um, that are coming into the program for the first 12 weeks. The other instructor that I share the space with, she teaches the theory for the students that are coming in for the first 12 weeks. So that being said, we're still teaching the same subjects. I'm just teaching a different part of it. Like, so what, when I come in, I'm teaching the hands-on part. When you're gathering materials, make sure that you get a syllabus or a class schedule. You can use this as your guide. So for me, I'll show you guys like here are like the weeks of like what they are going to be learning. And this will help you to plan accordingly to see like, do I need to bring in a model if you wanted to do that? if you wanted to make certain kind of games or if you wanted to develop like any hands-on crafts, this will help you to be able to plan accordingly and not be caught off guard. Some people work well with planning the whole entire semester out and then others work well just by doing a couple weeks at a time or maybe one week at a time. I suggest looking at it looking over it as soon as possible like as soon as you get the syllabus or the class schedule or whatever you guys call it look at it as soon as possible because there will be some things like say you're not comfortable with teaching with especially if you're a newly licensed instructor um sometimes some things we don't teach because we don't like it or we may not um know how to do it properly so for me what i did was i looked over it and i had let the other instructor know that i shared a space with like what i'm good at and what i'm not and what i wasn't good at i did not feel comfortable teaching them the hands-on part because i don't want to um i don't want to instill bad habits or bad wrong ways of doing things um to students fresh out the gate i would rather them learn it the correct way so my thing was no finger waves i'm still working on them um no chignons None of that. I'm working on it, but I'm not good at it to where I can show you the right way to do something. Okay. So the third thing is I'm going to gather materials. Not me, but you, you're going to gather your materials. So read over the chapter and highlight key points, especially points you know will be on the test. So with that syllabus that I showed you, like, for week one, I'll take, it was draping and roller sets. That chapter is really in the hairstyling chapter, but if you've ever been in beauty school, most of you have because you're watching this video, duh. But anyway, you know that they start off with doing like the basic things and then they go back in to read these chapters to kind of reinforce everything. But you want to still, even though you guys are just touching on the basics, you still want to be able to read that chapter and you want to be able to draw out important facts about draping, why it's important, why we do it. How do we drape a client? Able to show them like why is it important that we know the basis of a roller set? You know, what does that play, what role does that play in the finished product of the style? Because how I train the students, as with all schools, they train you the way that they want you to work on humans. So like when you work on a mannequin, they want you to drape your mannequin too so that you can get in the habit of draping something. So when you're working on your client, um, you can drape them. You can remember to drape them because this is something that you've been doing for 12 weeks. 
even if you do not teach the first 12 weeks, but you teach like the older students that have been in the program for a while, it is still smart. And I highly suggest that you do still read over the chapter, still highlight key points, especially points that you know will be on the test. Um, and you can also ask other instructors that are in the room like, hey, do you have the, the test for this chapter? So you make sure that the things that you're covering are things that they will be tested on because sometimes some students they do take note based on what you say and they study what they wrote to take a test if that makes sense so i will tell you too like some schools have a powerpoint already made for each chapter highlighting key points things that will be on the test and even questions you can ask to keep students engaged so the school that I went to is also the school that I went to for my training and they had PowerPoints made by um, the My Lady book where you can use it as a PowerPoint. So these PowerPoints also had everything in there. You can still, out. how do I put this? You can use the outlines and the PowerPoints to help you instruct your class, but don't forget to add like little key points and personal touches in there because that's what I did. Also tell you, always keep in mind the time you have to teach the subject so timeliness is your best friend um for me because i do teach the hands-on portion i don't have all day to teach a subject i only have part of the day so whatever i'm teaching needs to fit within that time frame that i have and i also have to account for students coming in late or students coming in um from lunch so when I start, I start in the afternoon. The students go to lunch for an hour, but sometimes, even though they know what time lunch ends, some of them are a little late, which I understand because it could be traffic or some of them try to run errands for their lunch time instead of actually taking the lunch, which I totally get it. So we have to account for that, like try to add at least, I'll say like 10 to 15 minutes for everybody to kind of trickle in, for everybody to get their books out, for everybody to just get prepared because they just had an hour that wasn't in school. So their mind is somewhere else for them to um, zoom back in. If you know the subject will be taught throughout the whole week, break up your lesson by days. So week one, as you saw on the syllabus, was about draping and roller set. That's for the whole week. So I don't have to try to cram in so much information on day one that the other days out of the week, I don't have anything to teach. And this also takes the pressure off of you of trying to be like, are they getting this? Am I doing too much? Like what's going on? That takes the pressure off of it because like for me, I um, only work, I think three days. So out of those three days, I can break up what I want to teach, the hours that I'm allotted and the days that I'm teaching so that I could break it all up. Also, I would tell you, because it's going to be spending over um, a week, give yourself time to recap what you just taught the day previously so that um, you kind of jog their memory. You don't have to necessarily like riddle off a whole bunch of sentences. You could just ask simple questions that kind of will trigger something for them. And this will also help them to retain the information. In my opinion, because I do tutoring and I um, am an instructor, I've learned that instead of telling students things, you want to ask them questions to see what they have remembered. Because if they're always listening to you and waiting for you to give the answer, they're not training their mind to remember things to be able to regurgitate it in their own verbiage. If that those words went together, that's what I meant. Okay. So... When picking material for the subject, grab what you need, choose materials that help teach your lesson and make it even easier to understand. When I grab materials to teach a lesson, I'm not grabbing a bunch of stuff that don't mean nothing to nobody. I am grabbing materials that are going to help me drive the point home. You do not want to confuse your students. You don't. And the reason why I say that is because when I was doing my training, one of my past instructors told me like 
you want to be mindful of the way that you speak to the students or how you teach them because if students feel overwhelmed they will drop that class they will not come back you want to retain as many students as possible not because of the money issue but because you want a higher success rate you want people to be able to brag about you being an awesome instructor you want people to brag about the school being amazing and it's not about watering the things down it's just about coming down to their level to make them understand for me I work with the students that this is their first 12 weeks so a lot of them they've been either doing hair or they've never done hair before but even if you have been doing hair a lot of these things you don't know the technical term for what you're doing like when you roll in here for a, a roller set you may not know that you've been doing roller sets on base this whole time you may not know that you've been using a 90 degree angle you know what I'm saying? you may not have known that so making sure that you're grabbing materials that reinforce what you're teaching it helps to um helps them to understand it more so like as an instructor you want to be able to uh teach given you want to be able to give them different ways of learning something some students learn by reading things some people learn by hearing things some people learn by uh, seeing things and some people learn by doing things so when you're teaching even though i teach the lab or the hands-on portion i'm talking to you but i'm also using my hands showing you what i'm talking about when i'm rolling that hair i'm showing you what my on base looks like i'm showing you what my half um half on half off base looks like and i'm showing you what an off base looks like so that way you just learn two times for me you know um, i will say two because i want to add this in there even if you feel like you've gotten a little wordy and just scan the classroom scan everybody's faces or their moves and just see like are they engaged do they look confused if you see that most people are looking confused don't go further ask questions like okay so what a, so is everybody feeling okay about this um do you guys have any questions um you picking up what i'm putting down like however you talk go ahead because one thing that i've learned to connect with students and to also establish authority in the classroom is to be yourself if you talk a lot of slang do that but control it you know like don't be saying loose things but you know just be yourself because they respect that so just ask them like hey um does anybody have any questions about the roller set or how i position my hands um, or how I'm keeping my comb in my hand because that's a big question and that's a big deal for students coming into the program is holding that comb in their hand and not putting it down so just ask those types of things and just being engaged and just looking up as you're talking always leave space for the students to be able to ask questions because if they are um, not able to ask questions they just left looking more confused than how they felt before they started coming into the program and you don't want that you can also add videos videos are very important when they are specific to the subject so choose videos that are short and to the point if you are going to add a video to demonstrate um, a technique or to reinforce a point that you have just told choose one that's real short real sweet sometimes ones that are too long and they get they take too long getting to the point people lose interest and that's just anybody whether it's a student parent teacher child whatever you start to lose interest very quickly and like i said you want to be timely about the lesson that you are being taught i mean that you are teaching so that they have time to be able to listen to the message so they have time to be able to do a hands-on portion and they also have time just to let the information marinate you know like season it on chicken marinate you know so if you can squeeze in hands-on or group activities do that because that's another form of learning and reinforcing what you taught so for me i taught the hair the hairstyling chapter which is i believe chapter 14 to the students um when i was the uh, in school for my training i taught the hairstyling portion so what i did was um i at first i wanted to do videos but i really couldn't find as many videos as i wanted to that were short and sweet so what i did was i had found some pictures of like regular hairstyles and i would create a scenario for the students and i would say hey i would give her a name everything i'm like okay y'all so 
Sierra just came in and she's wanting to get this style. So this style is whatever picture that's on there. And I'm telling like, okay, what would you do to accomplish this style? I want to know what kind of products you would do use, what styling tools you're going to use. Like, are you going to use a flat iron? Are you going to use a curling iron? Are you going to use a Marcel? Are you going to use a round brush? Are you going to use a paddle brush? Those types of things. So then I will allow, you know, students, whoever raised their hand that wanted to volunteer the information, they would tell me. And I would ask them, like, well, why would you use that product? Like, you said you wanted to use... Uh, Devon Ice, why would you want to use that? Like, what's key in this shampoo and conditioner? Because clients do like when you can teach them something that they didn't know. Um, so I ask them those types of things because essentially I treat my students like they're already professionals. I'm talking to you like you're a professional. I'm treating you like you're a professional. And when I ask you a question, I want you to respond to me in a professional manner. That's just me. That's how we roll in my class, okay? So you want to keep that in mind um doing those types of things because then it's like it helps them and i'm a firm believer in training your students to be independent thinkers training them to build confidence within themselves product knowledge is a way to build confidence like before we went on quarantine they had an assignment where i had wrote down all a list of products and they all got to pick a product and they were going to do research on this product Tell me, like, what is the product used for? How did the manufacturer intend for it to be used? And when would you use it? Like, in what step of the hair care routine would you use it? That helps them to understand why are you using a product? Sometimes we grab things and we don't know what we're using it for. We're just like, oh, I just use it because, no, if you can't tell me why, don't you use it? Because you know why? If you can't tell me why, when your client asks, oh, shoot, girl, why you use that? I don't know. You have to think of everything as a selling point. So most times when you put your products out on the station, um, your clients are paying attention to what you're using. I work in a salon where I also sell retail, so everything that I use can be purchased as well. If they like the way that their hair looks, smells, feels, um, they're like, dang, what was that? Because I really like that. Honey, let me walk you right on over here. Because if you have commission in your salon, then you just make commission on the product. And that's how I try to train my students as well. Like when you are using products, think of it like I can potentially sell this product to my client. That way I can regulate what she or he is using at home. Like be smart. We got to make money. That's why a lot of people don't like retail because they don't know how to sell. Selling is pretty easy. Once you learn about a product, it's easy for you to recommend them quick. Like I love conversations conversing about products in my salon because I genuinely love it and I post about different products all the time okay so that was a lot of rambling but um so I will also say is will reinforce what I said before was always scan the room check for students who look lost unengaged or students who are having their own conversation sometimes you'll have students and it happens all the time that think that they know more than you or they think that it's a better way or shoot i've had students flat out say she don't know what she doing and that ain't how you're supposed to do it i ain't arguing with no student okay you pay to be here they pay me to work here there's a difference <clears throat> take that how you want to so i said that to say take what they say with a grain of salt if you see a student feeling like they know more than you and they're trying to instruct another student on how to do it their way peace be still i'm not arguing with a soul too old so you can go over if the student has any questions or you see them struggling like oh you know did you need any help with that or did you want me to clarify any points or show you anything because there's a way that you can kind of turn that thing back into your favor and after you've done that and the student is still trying to act like they're the instructor just leave it alone because the fights or the arguments or the look it's not worth it it's it's just not worth it and depending on where you work at they ain't paying you enough to deal with it anyway so um sorry but 
So yeah, that's just my little tidbit. And also the students that are unengaged, a good way to try to get them engaged is just by calling them by name, but not putting them on the spot. Just be like, oh my gosh, Kendra, um, so did you have any ideas that you wanted to suggest or um, did you have any questions? Like think of like little crafty ways to not make them feel like you just put them on the spot, but reel them back into the lesson because essentially as a great instructor, you don't want anyone to be left um, confused or left feeling like they're unimportant in the classroom. Because that's another reason why a lot of students do um, drop classes as well because they feel like the teacher don't care, so I don't care. So I do try to, you know, pour and love on all students um also or lastly should i say don't forget to share your experience in this area when you share your personal experiences with this subject in the field it makes students feel like okay they're not just teaching me this just to teach me this they're teaching me it because it's important and it's something that i need to uh, learn and also i'm kind of naturally funny i'm not hilarious but I'm kind of naturally funny. So like me telling a story unintentionally, it becomes a comedic moment because now they laugh. I'm like, oh my gosh, really? And what did you do? Because people want to know like, what is it like working as a professional hairstylist, a professional licensed hairstylist? Like, what is it like? Like, do you have to deal with this? Do you have to deal with that? Or how did you deal with this? So they want to know, they want to feel intrigued. So I know that I have talked a lot. I'm going to do a brief recap just to make sure we hit all the points. So first one, you want to establish who is teaching what if you share your teaching space. Number two, once you've decided who's teaching what, you need to gather your materials. Number three, gather meaningful materials, whether that is handouts, PowerPoint slides, or videos and make sure that they short and sweet honey number four if you can squeeze in hands-on or group activities please do they're helpful and number five always scan the room um, make sure that everyone is alert and everyone is paying attention and always give yourself time to be able to double back if after you've scanned the room and you have questions that need to be answered or techniques that need to be redone for other students they either missed it or they just need to see it one more time and lastly don't forget to share your experience and remember being you is the best teacher that you can be being your authentic self Alrighty, i'm happy that you guys saw this video I will see you soon with another video. Let me know in the comments how this helped you and if you have any questions. And also, don't forget guys, if we get to 200 subscribers, I will be selecting someone to pay for their state board testing. Alrighty, I'll see you guys in the next video.